let's go over the best director and cinematographer collaborations of all time. But what I want to specifically focus in this video is the art of consistently collaborating. This isn't just one-off collaborations. These are directors and DPs who've come together time and time again. The best and most talented artists in the world recognize that when they can work with people they're familiar with, who they know and can trust, and can call each other out and work through those challenging moments that they will create gold. I should caveat, I can't cover all the best collaborators of all time. So if there's ones that you feel I missed, feel free to leave a comment below or say something mean about me and my physical appearance. Okay, mother so our first collaborators are the Coen brothers in Roger Deakins. We've had decades of most amazing collaboration with him. Our movies would not be what they are if it wasn't for Rogers. One of the reasons I chose them first is they have one of my favorite films of all time that they produced together, and that's No Country for Old Men. That film's cinematography is so powerful and the editing is so good that it didn't need a score. I think it only has one music cue near the end. Often when Roger Deakins and the Coen brothers came together, they would get nominated for best cinematography. And fun fact, Roger Deakins has been nominated 16 times and the only two times he's won it have been the last two times he's been nominated. The lesson there, never give up. The guy is a legend. And when this team comes together, they make amazing work. If you haven't seen Fargo, definitely add it to your list. And I guess that was your accomplice in the wood chipper. <laughs> Oh, Margie. I wanted to mention too, Christopher Nolan and Wally Fitzer. Although Nolan isn't collaborating much with Fitzer anymore, I don't think at all, he's kind of moved on to Hoyt Van Hoytema, but Christopher Nolan DP'd his first film. He did it for $6,000. And it was such a success that he was able to get some funding for his next film, Memento. It is pronounced Memento, not Memento. By the way, I think I mispronounce everyone's names in this video. I'm very sorry to all the directors and cinematographers. My apologies. And yeah, I'm in Spain. And this is when he brought on Wally Fitzer. And the experience went so well that they went on to work together over the next decade and a half, all the way up to the Dark Knight films. This is so cool to see these people start on an indie feature together, a very low budget film considering all things, and slowly work up together and grow their craft as a team. If you're just starting off in your career, perhaps the people around you will be the collaborators that you'll have the rest of your life. So often we look to someone who has more experience than us and we just think, oh, if I can make them my friend, I'll be able to get the success I desire. But your success might just be in learning to collaborate with the people around you. Next is Charlie Chaplin and Roland Tothero. This combo brought us some of the most magnificent camera tricks and quirky moments in cinematic history. If you haven't seen it, go watch Modern Times with the roller skating scene with Charlie Chaplin. There were so many camera tricks in this that still to this day, that scene is flawless. If you didn't know that they were doing in-camera tricks, you would believe that he was coming inches within toppling down a 100 foot drop in a department store. Why I brought this collaboration up though is sometimes the people you work with have idiosyncrasies. There's challenges with them. And this certainly was the case with Charlie Chaplin. Not only was he in the films, but he directed them and he even self-funded them sometimes, which meant he was a stickler for perfection. It wasn't uncommon that Chaplin would ask for up to 53 takes to nail one shot. This drew out the film processes. And sometimes Chaplin would even just leave for three days if he didn't feel creative. He would wait for his inspiration to come back. The studios hated this, but someone like Roland Tothero was able to work through that and help create magic. Quick honorable mention is Alfonso Cuaron and Emmanuel Lubensky. They didn't do that many films together, but they have created some of my favorite shots in cinema history and some of the ones that are most referenced, like Children of Men. One of these films that was a ton of long single takes where they had to create incredible camera rigs, cutting out the roofs of cars, and all sorts of magnificent shots, ones where blood splatters on the lens and it keeps going through the stairs. If it wasn't for films like Children of Men, I don't know if we would have a film like 1917. Also, that opening scene in Gravity is crazy and was one of my favorite moments in 3D cinema. Next, gotta give a shout out to some female filmmakers. We're talking about Claire Denis, and Angus Godard. These two female powerhouses collaborated over the course of two decades and brought us some incredible films, including Beau Travail, which was considered to be one of the best films of the 1990s. And there was a few good films in the 90s, just, just a few. Claire Denis is in her late 70s and she's still making films to this day, but I wanted to highlight them too, just because 
when you go look at their films, it's that style of cinematography where you can pause any shot and it could be a photograph. It could be a painting that you would hang in your house. This is the marker of good cinematography because every frame can tell a story. And when you see these two women come together, they don't waste any moments in the film. Next, you can't do a list without mentioning Steven Spielberg and Yanis Kaminsky. This combination of director and DP have the most nominations together for best cinematography. I think they've almost done 20 feature films together, including masterpieces like Schindler's List, which was shot all black and white. And of course, one of the most influential cinematic films, Saving Private Ryan, which again, popularized the use of the high shutter angle. When these two come together, they create the quintessential larger than life universe. The ones where you have to see these films in theaters because you're brought to another world. Spielberg is an incredible artist and knows his craft right down to every cut of his film. And Giannis has proven time and time again that he is the best cinematographer for Spielberg's visions. I have found in my career that genuinely when I have learned to bring others into the process of what I'm creating, what I'm thinking, my projects have always gotten better. Just working isolate on my own, there's a ceiling to that, there's a limit to that. And yes, this section is the sponsor section. <laughs> this is for our documentary, but what I wanna tell you about this academy that we have started is the most consistent feedback we've gotten about AOD has been the community and people finding the collaborators that they've been looking for for years. Not just that they get to work on set together, but they get to give each other feedback on their projects. We have group calls on a weekly basis where community members get to engage with each other. And we also do live meetups in different cities around the world. If you have more than two AOD people in your town or city, we'll pay for your drinks. That's something we've been doing to get people together. And our doors are opening very briefly here on Black Friday. Again, our documentary, it's our course in Academy. We have thousands of filmmakers, nearly 6,000 now in this. But that's where this video idea came from, is I've been watching everyone collaborate. We just had 130 videos in Art of Documentary get made for our one day doc competition. It's 130 new documentary films. And it inspired me to wanna to make this video today about collaboration, because I love seeing people not just get to make their first films, but get to find what might be lifelong friends and collaborators just like these directors and cinematographers that we've been talking about today. I would not be where I am today had I not had amazing people around me. And we wanna help provide that opportunity for you as well. So this is just a couple day sale. Doors aren't open all the time for Art of Documentary. You know the deal. We just open the doors two or three times a year. And so we've heard a lot of feedback that people wanna join right now. So we're doing this Black Friday flash sale. More information below, that'll be on Black Friday. We'll have huge, huge discounts. If you want more information, check the description below. But let's get back to the video. And we're back, I'm having fun. There's so many great more combinations I wanna mention. And the first, I wanna throw it to some great Canadians, Adam Goyen and Paul Sarosi. Now this combo has brought us 13 feature films and they're a pair of Canadian powerhouses. And why I brought them onto this list too is I had the pleasure of actually shooting a splinter unit. I got to DP some scenes alongside Paul in the film, Remember, in 2015 that Adam McGoyan directed. Being in the room with these two creatives and seeing the space and grace that they gave me as a young 25 year old to come alongside and shoot the scenes that were Christopher Plummer's view as he traveled across North America was such a special moment in my career. I saw two people who've worked with some of Hollywood's biggest actors and actresses. And the expectation when you're a young person, I guess about two years out of film school, is that, well, you're gonna be treated just like that, that you're a young person who doesn't have experience. But they were so gracious and so encouraging every moment of the way that I felt very empowered to go out there with this red camera and a zoom lens out in the Canadian Rockies and shoot these scenes for them. It reminded me that just because someone is less experienced doesn't mean that they won't produce good work. If you can encourage them enough and give them enough specific direction, which is what Adam and Paul gave me, you're gonna be able to help set others up for success. Go check out their work, especially Sweetheart Hereafter. And they most recently collaborated on Seven Veils that I had the chance to see at TIFF this year. Next is Quentin Tarantino and Robert Richardson. They've done six films together. They started with the Kill Bill films. But when I added them on the list is four times in a row, 
for each film they worked on together, they got nominated for Best Cinematography. Tarantino creates huge sets. He creates big worlds that he doesn't want to have much CG involved in. And the combination of him and Robert Richardson and their entire team are able to bring you into these large spaces, large rooms and large sets without them feeling overly fake, but they have that touch of Tarantino where you feel that you're in his world, in his movies. What's really cool with Richardson too is he's collaborated with numerous directors over numerous films. Time and time again, you'll hear directors talking about how good of a listener Robert Richardson is and how he's always taking their vision to the screen. And I think this is true when you see how many people he's gotten to collaborate with. Next on our list is Akira Kurosawa and Asakazu Nakai. Not only are these two considered two of the best collaborators out of Japan of all time, but Kurosawa is known as one of the most influential filmmakers across the world and across all generations. They shot films like High and Low, Seven Samurai, and Stray Dog, which got the Academy nomination. But go watch some of the scenes from Seven Samurai. These were huge battle scenes that didn't use CGI. And you can see its influence on modern day anime with some of the shots, really intense whip pans following characters' faces as they run through these environments. It's such a fun film and the scenes still hold up to this day. Kurosawa was also a painter and then transitioned into filmmaking and he made over 30 films. Well done. You couldn't make this list either without mentioning Alfred Hitchcock and Robert Burns. Did I, how did I say that weird? Alfred Hitchcock. Hitch, Hitch, Hitchcock? Alfred Hitchcock and Robert Burks. They brought to life the famous dolly zoom trick, especially in the film Vertigo, which if you're scared of the heights will make your stomach turn. But go into YouTube and Google opening scene from rear window. What a fun shot moving through a city. You don't get to see shots like this much anymore in cinema. There is something so fun about classic cinema how they would have to create these worlds. And I think because of all the effort they put into them, the directors and DPs would take such care to showcase them. Hitchcock was not an easy person to work with. He was demanding of his crew and of his actors. And time and time again, Robert Burks delivered when he was challenged with Hitchcock's vision. And honorable mention, not just because I'm a doc filmmaker, but because they've made some of the best docs of all time together, and that's Werner Herzog and Peter Zeitlinger. Go watch Grizzly Man. Yes, the cinematography isn't necessarily spectacular, but the poise and patience of the camera person and the director is what brought us some amazing scenes. Herzog has an incredible way of creating an interview and making it feel like a scene in a movie and not just someone talking. And these two have made over a dozen documentaries together, including one of my favorites, Into the Abyss. <music> Lastly, I had to bring up my man, Marty Scorsese. Now there's three DPs he's worked with consistently. And again, just to really drive home this idea of collaboration, I really wanna stress it on you. Find your collaborators, find your people and work with them often. Cause you'll see Martin Scorsese will work with another cinematographer for many years before he moves on to the next one. He isn't just bouncing around. He made numerous films with Michael Bauhaus, then he moved on to Robert Richardson, of course, and now currently he's working with Rodrigo Prieto, who brought some of the amazing shots from Killers of the Flower Moon. I hope you liked this one, a bit of a longer list, but I really enjoyed actually doing all this research. Again, leave your favorite combinations of directors and DPs below, not just people who worked once together, but have made multiple films that you appreciate. Thank you for watching this. Don't miss out on our Black Friday sale for Art of Documentary. You might find your lifelong creator there, maybe a lifelong partner, or someone to play Mario Kart with. Here we go! Thanks for watching this. I hate goodbyes. See you in the next one.